I'm going to stand here because the lighting is better and it will look much better on camera. So I'm going to show you how we shoot TED Talks, and this is really an extension of what um, June and Bruno were just talking about. Obviously, the most important thing to think about is you know, knowing your audience. And the great thing about TEDx is at every conference, you have these like, drastically different sized audiences and these drastically different types of audiences. So you know, whether it's you know, the small school room or the auditorium that's potentially even bigger than the Playhouse here in Oxford, what I'm going to talk to you about now is something that will hold true for all of them. So all the principles I'm really going to hit on in terms of shooting you know, are, are relevant whether you've got like a huge venue or a small venue. Not only should you know your audience, you need to know your medium. TED Talks play on the web, they play on iPhones, they used to play on iPods. Well, they still do. And they play on TV now. They're in all sorts of platforms. They're going to play at other TEDx events. You know? So one thing that's very important to think about is the small screen. Because at the end of the day, the small screen is where TED Talks are mostly viewed. And so when you're shooting for like this you know, little like, you know, two, three inch screen, what you really want to do is keep in mind like what types of shots work really well for that. Like a close-up works incredibly well in a tiny screen because it's this very kind of intimate shot. It's, you know, you have this one-on-one -on -one relationship with the person who you're watching. You know, you can kind of look into their eyes, they look back at you. It's, it's, it's a dynamic angle. In film, it's a very powerful shot. It's not a videotape school play. Like, I always joke about how, you know, at other conferences, you know, they'll stick a camera at the back of the room like a high school stage play. At TED, we treat it like cinema because it's a TED talk. And the people who come to TED reach out to you, and you all know this, they reach out to you on both an intellectual and an emotional level. And so all I want to do is capture that as effectively as possible so that we can share that with the rest of the world. This is what TED Talks looked like in 1984. This is Nicholas Negroponte on stage talking about kids using computers in Africa in 1984, which is very exciting. And it kind of looks like the snuff film parody of a TED Talk. <laughs> This is 2005, where production values had increased. This is right before I got involved and right before we launched TED Talks. And um, this is James Watson, one of the co-discoverers of the genetic code of, of DNA. And he um, probably could have been filmed with some more dynamic angles for a man of his posture. <laughs> This is now. Now we have six cameras on the main stage in Long Beach. And the purpose of this, it isn't for the point of having a lot of cameras. It's because we have so many speakers over this short window, and you don't know what to expect from all of them. Right? Like, we didn't know Bill Gates was going to open up a container and release mosquitoes onto the audience in an attempt to talk about malaria, but we happened to have a camera right behind him, and that guy jumped forward, got the shot. The other camera operators, in fact, none of us knew he was going to do that. It was a surprise. And if it wasn't for that one operator, we would have missed it, and it was a really powerful part of his talk. So the point of all of this is what we really want to do is give the subsequent viewing audience the very best seat in the house. Now, all of you will have great seats in the house because you're at TED. And TED is a, is a phenomenal experience when you're, when you're there, when you're in this environment. And it's you know, just so much fun to be here. But we want to share that with the person on the other side. You know, again, if you're watching this lecture, you know, the notion of a taped lecture, the notion of a conference really connotes something kind of boring, and that's not what we're all about. You know, at TED, we always kind of talk about how speakers are rock stars here, and in their fields, they are. And this is one of the key notes that I want you to share with all of your camera crews, is the camera should always be on. Even if you know, you're doing a live cut while it's happening, which we do here, even if you're going to edit them subsequently, and especially because there will be editing after the fact, you want all the camera operators to think as if what they're doing you know, is very deliberate, is very exact. So camera moves, like a zoom in, should happen slowly, deliberately. The other thing, it goes back to the close-up shot, you want to make a personal connection between the speaker and the, the viewer. So again, it's, the close-up is just so dynamic, whether it's on a large screen or on a small screen.
So the first camera you want to think about is, what is that camera that will get the close-up? Where are you going to put that camera in the room? Like in this room, for example, I'm standing over here on the side of the stage. Most of, the audi most of you are kind of spread out this way. There's a camera back over there. That camera is the camera that's getting a close-up of me and of all of the other speakers, just because by default this is where I'm looking. The second most important camera you use is the wide shot. And the great thing about that is you can juggle back and forth between the two. You know, often presenters will have, um, have slides up like this, and especially when they're really graphic, you don't even have to cut away to the slides when you're working in post. You've got it right there. The most important two cameras, again, are the close-up and the wide. And then the other cameras that you bring to, um, into the space are really meant to just provide additional coverage so that if someone's a pacer, you know, maybe you can maybe you can uh, catch that as they're, as they're changing direction all the time. The other thing to think about is unexpected angles can really work too. This is actually that same angle that caught Bill Gates from the back. And here's Hans Rosling, the Swedish statistician and world health expert who's approaching the stage with a giant stick. This is his solidified laser pointer. The great thing is often, you know, you want speakers to look to the audience, but if they do turn around for a reason, like in this case, you know, you we have a camera for it. The thing about TED is when we film it, it's not so much about just kind of, again, filming a tape lecture at the back of the room. It's the fact that we want the presenter to be shown as elegantly as possible. And their message, more important than the presenter, is the message that must go out to the audience as clearly and lucidly and impactfully as possible. One final thing you should do when you think about cameras is show us where you are. The great thing about TEDx is they happen in so many different vibrant arenas, and it's great to just get a little touch of that at some point in the talk. It's something we've started doing more and more of, in part because of TEDx. Now when you watch TED Talks, like early on, I want to just throw a little clip of, um, of an audience shot to just, just give a sense of the room and give a sense of like, who is this crowd? Why are these people here? How many people are here? It's, it makes the experience feel a little bit more clear to the online viewer. And I don't do too much of it because I also don't want to take you away from the speaker. But the great thing about it is when you do it and when you have this kind of shot, audience response is contagious. And laughter is contagious. Applause is contagious. At the end of the talk, you know, TED is this great forum because you always get these um, standing ovations. The other thing that you want to think about is adding drama, like cinematic lighting to emphasize the speaker. Thinking about with tech demos, how you would rehearse and then how you might set up a camera so that you can really just capture some of the nuances and the toys and the tools that the presenters bring to the stage. Again, with more cameras, especially for music, you can balance out a lot of vibrant shots, like shots on instruments, shots on singers' faces, and you can play around with different angles than you might normally do when it's a standard presenter. Here's a tip for interviews, if you ever have them. There's a very simple, basic three-camera setup that you can use, one on each person being interviewed and one on the duo, and you can cut back and forth. It's, you've seen this in news magazine shows before. And the other thing that's important when you're doing something like that is each camera has to trust that the other camera will get the appropriate shot. I'm going to just super quickly run through what not to do, because um, this is very key, and I'm known around the office for being a little cynical. So avoid awkward frame composition. Shoot the speaker. Again, it's all about the presenter. We don't need to see the screen if you're going to cut away to the screen, and especially we don't need to decapitate the presenter. I mean, they're, they've come all the way out to a TED event. Avoid awkward screen cropping. Again, like this is a great slide by Lawrence Lessig with like two words on it, and if it was just a wider shot, we could actually read it. Avoid kind of obstructing the camera. You want to keep the speaker in focus. You want to make sure that the lighting is set so that you can see the speaker. We want to see the speaker. We want to have that connection with the speaker. When you've got multiple cameras, you don't want them all shooting the same shot. It's really easy for camera operators to default to doing the exact same shot. This is a comfortable shot to film because they can get my body movement. And that's why everyone has to trust that they're all getting the respective wide, close, 
you know, different types of shots. Avoid shots that kind of feel static. You want to have a little dynamism to it. Avoid backgrounds that are too dark so that speakers drift into them. Often, speakers at TED wear black. This is what we do. Avoid backgrounds that are too close because you can't really light them. Like, even if you look behind me, this is a really close background, and、um, there's a spotlight on me, and that's why this is, this is whiter than the background over there, which is red. Avoid backgrounds that only look good in the room. That's self explanatory. And avoid uncomfortable, awkward looking speakers. This is also kind of self explanatory.、Um, you want the speaker to look and feel comfortable. Also, avoid acute angles that might not cut in well with your other cameras. And again, talk with your tech crews about this. You want all the cameras to cut well together because a shot like this actually does look good, but it doesn't fit with the other types of shots that I've shown you. So it kind of gets lost. A final note. People notice bad audio before they notice bad video. Please make sure you've got a good sound system. And when you're going to do a TEDx event, look on our website. Feel free to contact me. Feel free to contact any of us at TED. Use the video settings that we recommend because if there are 700 TEDx events and tons of videotapes and tons of, you know, Digitized video files are coming in. It would be great if they all kind of matched a similar format, and that will increase the opportunities for us to look at them faster and potentially get them on the site sooner. So, thank you all, and、um, enjoy your upcoming TEDx events.